She was very happy living with the dwarfs. Every morning they went off to the mountains to dig for gold. Every evening, when they returned home, she had supper ready for them, and the house was neat and clean. Although Snow White was alone all day, she did not feel lonely, for she had so many things to do. Meanwhile, the Queen, believing Snow White to be dead, was quite happy in the thought that she herself was the most beautiful lady in the land. It was some time before she bothered to ask the magic mirror the usual question. When she did stand before the mirror and said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies of this land, who is the fairest of them all? She could not believe her ears when she heard this reply. Thou, O Queen, art exceedingly fair, but the truth I must speak, and this I do swear. Snow White is not dead, but living still, in a little house far over the hill. And though thou, O Queen, art certainly fair, this child's great beauty doth make her more fair. Then great was the anger of the Queen. She knew that as the mirror never lied, her huntsman must have deceived her. The Queen's jealousy would not let her rest as long as she knew that anyone was more beautiful than she was. She determined to find Snow White and kill her herself. But how could she do this? She knew that she must not let Snow White recognise her. Finally, she decided to disguise herself as an old peddler woman who called at people's houses selling things from her basket. She dressed herself in old clothes and changed her face. No one could possibly have recognised the beautiful queen. Then she travelled through the forest until she came to the dwarf's cottage by the mountain. She knocked on the door and shouted, Laces and ribbons for sale! Pretty laces and ribbons! Snow White looked out of the window and thought to herself, What harm can this poor old woman do to me? Snow White opened the door and the woman brought her basket into the cottage. Snow White chose some pretty pink laces for her stays. The old woman offered to lace up Snow White's corset properly with the new laces. Snow White, suspecting nothing, agreed. Then the queen laced her so tightly that the child could not breathe and she fell on the floor as if she were dead. In the evening, when the dwarfs returned home, they were shocked to find their beloved Snow White lying on the floor as if she were dead. They lifted her up tenderly, and when they saw how tightly she was laced, they cut the new laces. Soon she began to breathe again, and gradually the colour returned to her cheeks. When the dwarfs heard about the peddler woman, they were convinced that she must have been Snow White's wicked stepmother. The dwarfs warned Snow White again, Take great care, and be sure to let no one enter the house. The queen hurried back through the forest. She was filled with joy because, believing Snow White to be dead, she herself must now be fairest of all. As soon as she reached home, she removed her disguise and stood before her mirror, asking, Mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies in this land, who is the fairest of them all? You can imagine the rage into which she flew when the mirror replied, Thou, O queen, art exceedingly fair, but the truth I must speak, and this I do swear. Snow White is not dead, but living still, in a little house far over the hill. And though thou, O queen, art certainly fair, this child's great beauty doth make her more fair. So, once more, the queen began to plan how she might kill Snow White. First, she prepared a comb which was poisoned. Next, she disguised herself as a quite different peddler woman and filled her basket with new things to sell. Again, she travelled through the forest until she came to the dwarf's cottage by the side of the mountain. She knocked on the door and shouted, Cheap wares to sell, pretty things to sell. 
Snow White put her head out of the window. I dare not let you come in, she said. I have promised the dwarfs to open the door to no one. Never mind, you can look out, can't you? replied the queen, holding up the dainty comb. It was so pretty that Snow White could not resist it, and she opened the door to the peddler woman. The old woman said, You must let me comb your hair properly for you. Snow White agreed and seated herself on a stool. The queen then stuck the comb sharply into Snow White's head, so that the poison went into her blood. Immediately, she fell to the floor as if dead. Fortunately, it was almost evening, and soon afterwards the seven dwarfs came home. When they found Snow White once more lying on the floor, they suspected that her stepmother had been again. They soon found the poison comb and pulled it out. Snow White quickly recovered and told them what had happened. Once more, the dwarfs talked seriously to her. They warned her of the wickedness of her stepmother and begged her never to let anyone enter the house while they were out. Meanwhile, the queen was hurrying through the forest, muttering to herself, I've killed her this time. I've killed her this time. On reaching home, she removed her disguise and stood before the mirror, asking, Mirror, mirror on the wall. Among the ladies of this land, who is the fairest of them all? Just as before, the mirror replied, Thou, O queen, art exceedingly fair, but the truth I must speak, and this I do swear. Snow White is not dead, but living still, in a little house far over the hill. And though thou, O queen, art certainly fair, this child's great beauty doth make her more fair. At these words, the queen stamped her feet and beat on the looking glass in her rage. Snow White shall die, she vowed, even if it costs me my life. The queen knew that it might prove impossible to persuade Snow White to let her into the cottage a third time, so she plotted cunningly. She took a lovely apple, which had one green cheek and one rosy cheek. It looked so tempting that anyone who saw it must long to eat it. Then she put poison into the red cheek of the apple, while leaving the green side free of poison. This time the queen filled her basket with apples and disguised herself as a farmer's wife. For the third time she made her way to the dwarf's cottage and knocked on the door. I am forbidden to open the door to anyone, called Snow White through the window. It's all the same to me, replied the farmer's wife. I only want to get rid of these apples. Here, I'll give this one to you, she went on, holding out the poisoned apple to Snow White. I dare not take it, replied Snow White, shaking her head. The farmer's wife laughed pleasantly. Are you afraid that it's poisoned, she joked. Look, I'll cut it in two, and we shall eat half. This she did, holding out the rosy half of the apple to Snow White and biting into the green half herself. Snow White longed to eat the rosy half of the apple, which looked so tempting. When she saw the woman happily eating one half of the apple, she thought there could be no harm in eating the other half herself. So she took the rosy half of the apple and bit into it. No sooner had she done so, that she fell down dead. The queen laughed a horrible laugh and cried, This time the dwarfs won't waken you. Then the queen returned to her palace and asked her mirror, Mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies of this land, who is the fairest of them all? At long last it answered, Thou, O queen, art the fairest of all. Thus the jealous queen was finally content. When the dwarfs returned home in the evening, there lay Snow White on the floor, no longer breathing. Yet they still hoped that they might be able to revive her. They unlaced her stays, combed her hair and washed her face, but they could not find how she had died. The dwarfs were heartbroken. 
They stood round her and wept, saying, Our beautiful Snow White is dead. For three days and nights they stood round her mourning. At the end of three days the dwarfs knew they must bury their beloved Snow White. Yet they could not bear to do so, for she looked as though she was still alive. So they had a glass coffin made, in order that they might still see her. They wrote on the side, in letters of gold, that her name was Snow White, and that she was a king's daughter. The dwarfs carried the glass coffin to the top of the mountain. Then they each took it in turn to sit always by the coffin, day and night. There Snow White lay, as if still alive, but sleeping with her skin as white as snow, her cheeks as red as blood, and her hair as black as ebony. Even the birds came and wept to see her lying so still. Snow White lay in the glass coffin for many years, and still she looked as if she were alive and only sleeping. One day it happened that a king's son found the glass coffin on the top of the mountain. He could not take his eyes from the beautiful girl within it, he gazed at her and fell in love with her. Let me have the coffin, he begged the dwarfs, and I will give you whatever you ask. But they only answered, we would not part with Snow White for all the gold in the world. The prince continued to plead with them, I cannot live without her, he said. If you will give her to me, I shall cherish her all my life. At length the dwarfs took pity on the prince and agreed to give him the coffin. As the prince's servants were carrying the coffin down the mountainside, they stumbled on the root of a tree. The coffin was so badly jolted that the piece of apple, which had stuck in Snow White's throat, was flung out. She opened her eyes, lifted up the lid of the coffin and sat up. Where am I? she cried in surprise. The prince was overjoyed to see her alive. He told her all that had happened and how he had fallen in love with her. Come with me to my father's palace and we shall be married, he begged, and Snow White agreed. She said goodbye to the dwarfs who had been so kind to her and had loved her so dearly. Although they were sad to lose her, they were content to know that she was alive and that she would be happy with the prince. A magnificent wedding feast was arranged for Snow White and the prince, and it happened that Snow White's stepmother was among those invited to the feast. When the queen, dressed in her finest clothes, was ready for the wedding, she stood before her mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror on the wall, among the ladies in this land, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Thou, O queen, art exceedingly fair, but the truth I must speak, and so I do vow, that the young bride-to-be is more lovely than thou. These words so angered the queen that, at first, she felt she could not bear to go to the wedding. Later, she felt she must see this new young queen. Of course, when she arrived at the feast, she recognised Snow White. Her rage was so great that she fell down and had to be taken home, where soon afterwards she died. <laughs>